Good morning, children. Today we're going to discuss the Dangerous 2 bus. What is the Dangerous 2 bus? It's the original analog summing box, uh, the original concept, the invention, the one that started everything. Uh, what is analog summing? Analog summing is the best of both worlds. We all have computers and we all decided to make music with it. DAWs, Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, Performer. I even know some people who use GarageBand. It's a brave new world. Computers are awesome. Um, they're portable, some of them. Uh, they're great for recall, they're great for editing, they're great for plugins. Those are all wonderful things. Some of us might have identified problems with that workflow, maybe tonal problems or game management problems. Things that computers are not necessarily the best at. Uh, what the Dangerous 2 bus does is it brings 60 years of tradition of game management and tone in the analog domain into the world of computer recording. And I'm going to show you how. First, you need converters. You bought them, you use them. I use 16, anywhere from 8 up is good. 16 channels coming out of my DAW into the 16 inputs of the 2 bus. Coming out of the 2 bus, 2 channels of my summed material into an A to D converter back into my DAW. So really, it brings back the old paradigm of having a 2 inch machine, a console, SSL and Neve, depending on your self-respect and aesthetics, and then a half inch machine to print back to. We're having 2 inch console, half inch, DAW, 2 bus, DAW. The difference, of course, is that it's modern, it fits into the 2U rack, and you don't need a tech to maintain it. All right, let's take a look at the hardware. This is a 2 bus LT. Uh, I have a 2 bus and a 2 bus LT in my rack. Uh, first, let's talk about the mono buttons. Why, why a mono button? Well, say you send your bass drum to output 1 and your snare drum to output 2. It's going to go boom, chack, boom, chack. So if you hit the mono button, it goes boom, chack, boom, chack. Much better, unless, of course, you're mixing a Beatles record. As a side note, I think it would be interesting to discuss the difference between the 2-bus and the 2-bus LT, because I get that question a lot. First, they sound the same. They sound the same. Did I mention they sound the same? They sound the same. Uh, otherwise, there are physical differences. So, for example, uh, this is a 2-bus LT, it's 1U, the 2-bus is 2U. That's pretty obvious. This is a high-quality pot right here. Whereas on the 2-bus, it's a stepped switch. Another difference is here you see a switch that's not on the LT. It's a plus 6 dB switch for the 2-bus. That is used in case you're stuck in the DAW with your fader maxed and still not enough gain on something, say vocal. You place plus 6 dB here and now it's loud enough. It's a crush really. You should be able to gain stage without it. In the back, we have... 2D subs for the LT and we have dedicated XLRs for the 2-bus. This is the expansion port and that is cool because it lets you daisy chain several 2-buses uh, without losing any channels. Um, so if you have two of them you get an actual 32 channels of summing. How would you choose between one or the other? Well if your converter has XLRs in the back you might want to go with the 2-bus. If your converter has D subs in the back it might make sense to go with the 2-bus LT. If you need the uh, plus 6 dBs of analog gain, 2 bus is the way to go. If you only have one rack space safe in your rack, LT is the way to go. That's it for hardware. Let's talk about software. If you haven't used analog summing, you are used to send everything in your session out the same pair of uh, converters, probably output 1, 2, right? Bass drum, snare drum, everything goes to output 1, 2. Let me show you a session that is set up for analog summing. If you look here, you'll see that my kick is going out to 2 bus 1 my all my kicks i have three kicks here my snare drum is going to output two my overheads go to output three four my tambourine goes to output five six my bass is uh bust into this aux here and goes to output nine my bass bow which comes on the chorus only is on 13 14. my acoustic guitar goes to two bus seven eight my violin goes to 13 14. my banjo everybody needs a good banjo goes to output 13 14 vocal goes to output 10, all my effects, reverbs and delays go to 15, 16. And then these two tracks in the, to the right here, this is my return, which is the feedback from the 2-bus into the computer, and then that's printed to a track. Remember, source, 2-bus, print. So again, the idea is that instead of sending everything to output 1, 2 and get this big block of sound, you use your dedicated converters, as many as you can get, and send separate stems, as they say in movie mixing, and uh, in order of preference. So, for example, uh, 
my preference is transient heavy stuff. So I will separate the bass drum and the snare drum, anything percussive. I will separate the bass and the vocal. Yes, vocals can be percussive. Um, I don't care about pads that much. The other advantage is that uh, I can tell my assistants to set up that session the same way every time. Two advantages to that. Number one, I can come to the studio later. Number two, um, well, I always know where my bass drum is and I always know where my snare drum is because they're always there, which saves a lot of time when you're mixing. Let's listen to some music. Let's listen to this session because let's not forget this is all about music. Uh, this is a Will Knox song called Footprints on the Moon. One life, too little time to start A love that was meant to last I tried to fight the fists of time But fell to the sound of it So I pray our souls are saved in a life beyond the grave That our hearts don't waste away like two canaries in a cage When all that remains of this human race is footprints on the moon So what are the benefits of the dangerous two bus? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I can see four important things. Sound quality, headroom, fader position, and analog integration. Let's talk about sound quality first. We all spend a lot of time trying to translate the sound we have in our heads and try and make it come out of the speakers, and that's a hard thing to do. Um, trying to achieve that mental picture and solidify it uh, is easier and faster for me with the two bus. I get a stronger bottom, very strong center, uh, and and then I don't get that 3K, you know, that, that mm thing that hurts your eyes when you listen loud, that's gone. Uh, and then I get a nice sheen uh, on the top end, and I always cringe when somebody tells me, oh, that box sounds like a record. I'm like, in this case, it does sound like a record. Um, I save a lot of time, and I get there much faster when I use a two bus. What about the headroom? Well. You may have found yourself in this situation. I know I have mixing in the box. You're mixing, life is beautiful. About four hours down the line, you may find yourself getting a suntan from the clip LEDs. What happened? Somebody sent you, somebody else, not you of course, sent you 100 tracks of stuff recorded too loud because everybody records too loud. Your mission is to take those 100 tracks of stuff recorded too loud and deliver two tracks of good sounding stuff. Good luck with that. So you may find yourself bringing all taking all those faders and bringing them down 6 dBs and try and get, gain some, some space back. With the 2-bus you don't have that problem, it's designed to give you headroom. It's designed to take a lot of heat so you can run into it hard and get a good tone out of it right away and not have to worry about gain management so much. It's not a computer crushing numbers, it's copper summing audio. If you take a look at my session, you may notice that most of my faders, well actually all my faders, are hovering around 0 dB. Why is that a big deal? If you mix in the box, you will notice that you often have to compromise with your fader position. Say if you have a very loud instrument, you may have to bring it all the way down here. Why is that a problem? It's a pain in the butt. If you want to change something for say 0.1 dB, you, you, you can't. It's really, really hard. You have to like use modifier keys and stuff and it, it, it doesn't feel good. On the other hand, if you can have your fader here like you do if you have your proper gain stage with the 2 bus, then 0.1 dB is no problem and the precision is, is very good. Also, if you have a control surface like this Avid Command 8 or any of them really, uh, you'll find that it's really unpleasant to have your faders all the way down here. Uh, it doesn't work very well, they're not, not very responsive. With a 2-bus, you'll find that your faders are going to hang out up here when the resolution is good and they respond very well. It changes the feel of mixing with the control surface and it's all about the feel. I feel like I should also talk about analog integration, meaning the integration of analog outboard hardware into the workflow. The 2-bus makes that easy. I'm a plug-in guy. I use 80-90% plugins. But there are 
analog outboard boxes that do things that plugins don't do. And also there are applications that are very practical, like for example, say you have a bass heavy mix with a lot, a big bass drum, and you want to have a push on that. It is really simple to just insert a good EQ, like an old Poltec, in between the converter and the two bus and push five or six dBs at 60 hertz. You get your big bass drum with no headroom problems. That's nice. Also, I can insert outboard after the two bus before the doll, say a stereo EQ or a stereo compressor to sweeten the whole mix. Uh, in one pass. It's a very practical, old-school way to work in a new-school environment. So, the sound quality, the headroom, the fader position, and the analog integration are four reasons why I've been installing two buses in every rig I've built since I tried it. If you mix music today, you owe it to yourself to try one.